I'm back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the January 2023 IAL International A Level Edexcel Pure Mathematics P1 paper. This question here is about this curve C, which is like this cubic kind of curve, as you can see, and this straight line L. Okay. Um, we're told the equation of the curve in terms of this factorized form with these three brackets. And first part A, it says, use the given information to state the values of x for which f of x is greater than 0. So f of x is equal to 0 when it hits the x-axis. That's when it's equal to 0. And it's greater than 0 when it's above the x-axis. And it's less than 0 when it's below the x-axis. Okay. So first of all, let's figure out where it hits the x-axis. Well, we can see that it hits the x-axis when f of x equals 0. So we, this is like going to be how we decide what our, our boundaries are. So when f of x equals 0, you have either, th you've got basically these three factors, 3x plus 20 times x plus 6 times 2x minus 3 equals 0. So we can say either 3x plus 20 is 0 or x plus 6 is 0 or 2x minus 3 is 0. So this is when x equals minus 20 over 3, okay, which is going to be minus basically um, 6 and 2 thirds. And you have when x is negative 6 and when x is equal to 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Okay, so these are the three places where it hits the x-axis. So this minus 20 over 3 is the same as saying minus 6 and 2 thirds. Minus 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, so I'll, I'll write it as a fraction. So we can see here that this is going to be your negative 6 and 2 thirds. This is going to be your negative 6. And this is going to be your 1.5, okay, which is 3 over 2. Right, so those are the three places where f of x is equal to 0. So we want to find when f of x is greater than 0 when it's above the x-axis. So it's between this curve goes above the x-axis between these two values for x. So we can say when x is between minus 6 and 2 thirds and 6. Right, we don't put equals here because it's when it's greater than, not equal to, greater than only. So it's when x is more than minus 6 and 2 thirds and x is less than negative 6, that's one region and also we've got to also include when x is greater than 1.5 because it's always it's going to be whenever x is greater than 1.5 this thing is going to continue rising so it's going to be above the x-axis for all values of x greater than 1.5 so we're going to say when x is greater than 1.5 so we have to include both of these okay from x between minus 6 and 2 thirds and 6 and negative 6 sorry what did I, what did I write there 6 negative 6 of course and negative 6, and between when x is greater than 1.5. That will give you all the range of values for which um, f of x is greater than 0. Okay, You can leave it like this. We can write it in set notation. If you write it in set notation, I mean, we should put or here, right? In set notation, we'll say x is such that x is between minus 6 and 2 thirds, okay, and a negative 6. And you're going to put union with x is greater than 1.5, something like that. Write it as a square bracket, a uh, wiggly bracket. Right, but you can leave it like this. This is perfectly fine. And there's the answer to part A. Then part B says expand 3x plus 20 times x plus 6 times 2x minus 3, writing your answer as a polynomial in simplest form. So what I can do is I can start off by leaving this as it is and expanding this bracket. So you're going to have 2x squared. You're going to have minus 3x. And you're going to have plus 12x. You're going to have minus or negative 18. And we can simplify that before we expand any further. So 3x plus 20 times 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. Now we can expand this. That's 3x times 2x squared, which is 6x cubed. 3x times 9x, that's 27x squared. 
3x times negative 18, that's minus 54x. Let's just make sure of that in case. Now, 3 times 18. That, that's 54, so it's 3x times minus 18 is negative 54x. Now we've, we've multiplied the 3x with all of these terms. Now we've got to do the 20. So 20 times 2x squared is plus 40x squared. 20 times 9, that's going to be uh, 180, and that's x. And 20 times minus 18, well, 2 times 18 is, is 36. That's going to be 360 minus 360. Okay, that's, yeah, so minus 360, that's correct. So now we almost got there. We got 6x cubed, it's only x cubed term. We have 27x squared and 40x squared, that's 67x squared. Then we have the x terms, minus 54x plus 180x, so it's 180 minus 54, which is 130. 126x plus 126x. Let me just make sure of that in case I made a silly mistake. So you have a 180 minus 54. Gives you 126. So a, yeah, that's what I wrote down. And then we're going to have, um, that's it, minus 360 at the end. Okay, so we've expanded this whole bracket. And we collected all the like terms. And there we have it. That's the answer. Okay, so we expanded that bracket and got our answer. And that's the answer in its simplest form. Okay, now the next question says, the straight line L and is the tangent to the curve C at the point where C cuts the y-axis. Okay, so this is the point where the line is a tangent to the curve at that point. Given that the line L cuts C at the point P as shown, so it also cuts the line, the curve at this point. So it touches the curve here and it cuts the curve there. All right. So given that C, the line L cuts C at the point P as shown in figure four, find using algebra the x coordinate of the point P. All right. So first thing we're going to do is use the fact that the curve and the line are tangents at this point. So I can use that to find. Um, the equation of the curve because I know that the curve C, I, can, I know this point, I can work out this point from the equation of the curves. So I can say for C, the equation is equal to y equals, let's go back and find out what we got earlier here. y equals, we can write, I can even write it in this term, form or this form. I'll leave it in this form because I think I might need this form. So you have, um, yeah, you have here 6x cubed plus 67x squared, plus 126x, minus 360. Okay. In fact, what I'll do is, no, it's okay, 6x cubed. 6x cubed. And you have um, 67, 126, and 360. Plus, plus, minus. So you have 67x squared, you have minus 360, and you have minus, so you have what? plus 126x, plus 126x. Okay, that's the equation of our curve. So um, it says find using algebra the x coordinate of p. So first of all, we can find the x coordinate of q. The x coordinate of q, well, we know that it's not q. We don't have, it's not called q. The point where they intersect, we don't know what it is, right? This point here. I know at this point, okay, x equals zero x equals 0 is the point, so I can find the coordinates of this point. Well, um, basically, that's minus 360. That's when y equals negative 360. That's the y-intercept for this curve. Okay, so when x is 0, y is equal to negative 360. So this point here is 0, negative 360. That's where the tangent, this is the place where the tangent is. Okay, so we know the place where the tangent is when x is 0 and y is minus 360. Okay, so now, if I work out um, what the gradient of the curve is at that point, that will be the same gradient of this line. And this line passes through this point, 0, negative 360. So 
If I want to find the equation of line L, I can do so by working out what the gradient of the curve is at that point where it hits the y-axis. Okay, so how do I find the gradient of the curve at that point? Well, I've, I have to find dy dx. I know dy dx is equal to 18x squared plus 2 times 67, that's 120, plus 14, that's 134x multiply by the power, take one from power. This drops its x term, so it's plus 126, and the constants become zero. So I know at, um, when x equals zero, we can say dy dx is going to be 126. When x is zero, dy dx is 126. Okay, so that is the gradient of the line, okay, L. The gradient of the line L is equal to 126. It's the tangent to the curve at that point. Okay, and the point where the curve, um, the tangent is, is the point 0, negative 360. So therefore, the equation of the tangent is y equals 126x minus 360. That's the tangent. Okay, that's the equation of the tangent, okay, to the curve. Now, we want to find where this hits the curve again. So we have to solve the equation where you've got your equation of the curve, which is 6x cubed, 6x cubed plus 67x squared plus 126x minus 360 is equal to 126x minus 360. Okay. 126x minus 360. All right, so it's a bit weird. It's like the end of this. So when you try to solve this equation, these two, they cancel out. So you're left with 6x cubed plus 67x squared plus 0, because you have to subtract this from both sides and add this to both sides. That's equal to 0 now. Now, I know that there's a common factor here of x squared, and what I'm left with is 6x plus 67. Right, of course, there's a common factor of x squared because there's a repeated root when x equals zero. That's where this is a tangent to the curve. That's, that's a repeated root where there's a tangent like that. Okay, and that means that 6x plus 67 is equal to zero. So x equals negative 67 over 6. That is the x coordinate of the point P, and that's what we have to find. Okay, so we can say the x coordinate of the point P is equal to negative 67 over 6. And um, that's the answer to this question. That answers question number 10 from January 2023. Um, that was part C. Is there a part D? No, there isn't. So that's the end of question 10. This, this paper actually has 11 questions, so there's one more to go. But um, that you know, wraps up this question, which was all about, if we look back, part A, it was all about basically cubic curves and cubics and, you know, solving um, equations of tangents, differentiation, a few topics there all mixed up. So I'm going to put the playlist for the paper, January 2023 P1 in this region here, the link for the playlist for cubic curves would be like I think we under graphs over here and I'll also put a link for um, differentiation over here applications of differentiation you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon